So you want to become a dietitian. It's hard, a lot harder than people think, but I do believe that it is worth it. So in this video, I'm gonna give you all my knowledge on how to become a dietitian. And at the end, I'll give you my top tips for getting there too. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Marie and I'm a registered dietitian in Ireland and Bermuda. And this is part one of my dietitian as a career series. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any of the future videos. And also please give the video a thumbs up because it really helps support my channel. So to start off, I'm gonna answer a common question that I get, which is, should I become a nutritionist or a dietitian? And what I say is, if you can become a dietitian, because all dietitians are also nutritionists, but a nutritionist cannot call themselves a dietitian. I'll link below in the description an article describing the difference between the two. Now it is a lot harder to become a dietitian, but it is worth it because you do have a lot more opportunities in terms of career and I would argue sometimes in terms of pay as well. And it's a really respected qualification. Whereas unfortunately, nutritionists can be a little bit more vague, even if you've studied for years to get the title. Now there are a few different routes to becoming a dietitian, but at a basic level, what you need is a specific university degree, a period of practical training, and in some countries you also need to pass a national licensing exam. This isn't needed in Ireland and the UK you obviously have to pass all of your college degree exams, which is a challenge in itself. And in the United States, effective from January 2024, a minimum of a master's degree is required to be eligible to sit the RDN exam to become an accredited dietitian. So you will actually have to do a master's, not just a bachelor's undergraduate degree in the United States. So we'll start off with the most straightforward path and the path that I'm the most familiar with, which is doing a bachelor's undergraduate degree in dietetics. And this is normally done straight out of school. So after you're leaving certain Ireland or after your GCSEs in the UK or after high school in the States. This path is often hard to get into because you usually require very high grades, but it's the quickest and most straightforward path to becoming a dietitian. So for example, the year that I was doing my Leaving Cert, I needed 565 Leaving Cert points. And if you're not familiar with the Irish system, it's basically getting A1 in five or six subjects. Honestly, it's around the equivalent of trying to get into medicine. But that year I knew all I wanted to do was dietetics, so I really put my head down and I studied very hard. And looking back now, I'm very glad I did because it was worth it. So I got into a full-time undergraduate bachelor's degree in dietetics. And these are normally four to five years in length. And the entry requirements for an undergraduate degree vary by university. So I'd recommend reaching out to the university that you're thinking of applying to and checking if they have any specific requirements. But often you might need a minimum grade in English and in maths. And sometimes you will also be required to have specific subjects like biology or chemistry. If people are not aware of this, they work really hard, they get really high grades, but then they don't have the subjects that are also required. And that's a very sticky situation to find yourself in. You might be able to work around it and take a year out and do that subject on the side. But if you can, it's really good to know these things in advance. In Ireland, there are currently two places where you can do an undergrad. That's in Dublin and in Coleraine. But I'll leave links below in the description for information on where you can become a dietitian in other countries as well. Now, if you don't manage to get into one of the undergraduate courses, which unfortunately is a reality for a lot of people, there is another option. You can do something else first. So you do an undergraduate degree in maybe a nutrition science or another health science. And then once you've completed those four years, you can apply to do a master's or a postgrad in dietetics. So it's a longer route to becoming a dietitian. You normally have the four years of your undergrad and then two years of the master's. So you're looking at around six years. Now, the catch is that these masters or these postgrads can be competitive and difficult to get into. What you will need is that the undergrad that you did, it will need to have an acceptable level of human physiology and biochemistry. Usually something like a health science, nursing or nutritional science will do. You need to have a good grade, so usually a minimum of a 2-1. And then often if there's limited places, they're going to do interviews and they're going to be looking out for people that are highly motivated and really committed to doing dietetics. So they're going to be looking to see if you've any experience shadowing dietitians, if you've any experience working in any nutrition related field and what is your motives for wanting to become a dietitian. They'll check that you've really sat down and thought about this and that you just haven't applied on a whim. And then hopefully you'll get accepted and in two years time you'll have your dietetic degree, again, provided you pass. In Ireland there are currently three places where you can do the masters, which is Cork, Limerick and Dublin. And I think it goes without saying that for all of these degrees, you also need to pass an occupational health screen and a criminal record screening as well because you are going into a healthcare field. Now let's take a closer look at what you will be studying. These programs usually include a lot of the sciences. So your biology, your physiology, your biochemistry. You'll get to do genetics, human nutrition and human physiology. We also did maths for a little while in year one. You'll do modules on food processing 
and food hygiene. And we also did a cooking module as well, which was really enjoyable. Other subjects are social sciences, human behavior, psychology. You'll do a lot of pharmacology, so looking at different drugs and different drug nutrient interactions. There's always going to be modules in communication, so how to deal with a client on a one-to-one -one basis, how to communicate nutrition education on social media, or through public health messaging. Of course, there's going to be a lot of dietetic modules and nutrition modules and nutrition through the life cycle. There's usually quite a lot of medicine too, which can often be one of the hardest exams to pass. You'll also likely get the opportunity to do a thesis or a dissertation as part of your degree. And this is really good learning experience into how nutrition research works. Because some dietitians, they never actually see clients on a one-to-one -one basis at all in their whole career. They work fully conducting research. Nutrition really is an evolving science and we need to be continuously learning about new diets, the gut microbiome, drugs and so on. So you'll have classes on research methods and data analysis and how to write a research paper and how to reference scientifically. And then as part of your thesis, you might be conducting some of your own research. It can be difficult and stressful, but it's also really insightful. So for example, I had the opportunity to, to do my thesis abroad and I went to the United States and I did it in Purdue University on bariatric surgery and iron deficiency. And I had to recruit people into my study. I had to get them on blood tests at week one and carry them all the way through to week eight collect a lot of data, do a lot of interviews, try to make sure the people stayed in the study. And it really gives you a true appreciation into the amount of work that goes into clinical trials. You will also have to do a lot of practice placements in different settings, like an acute hospital or maybe in the community or in food service. And normally you need around 1000 hours. This is usually done all at the end in one big block or a little bit every year as you move along through your course. And you'll get direct hands-on experience with patients while being supervised by a registered dietitian. So it's really good time to put everything you've learned in college into practice in the real world with real patients. There's usually a list of competencies that you need to show that you have and that you're able to meet to allow you to eventually end up passing your placement. And it is hard and unfortunately a lot of people do fail and they may need to repeat. If it's something you're interested in, comment below and I can do a whole other video on my tips for getting through placement. But it is a big change when you're taking fake patients in the classroom to real patients in the real world. So once you've completed your degree and your practical training, you should be able to move on to become a licensed dietitian. But in some countries, there's this additional step where you need to do a licensing exam. So in Canada and the United States, it's not required in Ireland or the UK. And then once you have your exams passed and your qualification, you can apply to become a registered dietitian, which means you are then authorized to use the title dietitian in that country or state and practice and see clients. So you would apply to the country's healthcare professional regulatory board, which in Ireland is CORU. In Bermuda, it's the Bermuda Health Council. It's the HCPC in the UK and the AHPRA in Australia. You normally have to give them a copy of your degree legal documents like passports and visas and maybe some reference letters amongst a few other things. And once you've submitted your documents, you then just have to wait until you're approved, which usually is a straightforward enough procedure. It can be a little bit more difficult when you're applying to a different country from where you got your qualification. So for example, when I applied to Bermuda, my qualification was in Ireland. So it just took a little bit longer. I had to provide a little bit more documents about the degree itself and I had to look through everything. Eventually I was accepted. Whereas it was easier to apply to Ireland after getting an Irish qualification. And then once you're on the board or the register, you then just need to stay on it, which shouldn't be that hard. What you need to do is you need to always abide by a code of professional conduct and ethics, and you need to keep up proof of regular learning. Because as I said, nutrition is an evolving science. So there's always new research coming out about different diets and different supplements and so on. So we need to always show that we're attending courses, that we're doing supervision, that we're keeping our skills up to date so we can provide the best care for our patients. So most healthcare regulatory bodies will audit you every one to two years. And then you need to just submit your certificates for attending courses, webinars, and so on. Now you might not want to stop there. And this is one of the reasons why I love dietetics. There's so much to learn. There's so many different areas that you can work in. You can be upskilling all the time if you'd like. So for example, if you're really interested in sports, you could apply to do a master's in sports nutrition or a post-grad in sports nutrition. And then you could work with elite athletes. Or for me, I was really interested in women's health. So I upskilled and I'm now a certified prenatal dietitian and a certified fertility dietitian. Also at the start of my career, I upskilled as a low FODMAP trained dietitian to help people with IBS. But there's courses that you can be doing all the time. So finally, my tips if you are planning on becoming a registered dietitian. First, I would say to definitely try and get some work experience or sometimes shadowing a dietitian before applying for a course, because you may think you would like it, but dietetics can 
really be quite different to what many people expect. It's often a lot more medical than people realize. That said, there are many different career paths that you can take as a dietitian. You don't have to work in a hospital, you don't even have to see patients if you don't want to. But try to speak with dietitians working in different areas to give you a better understanding of the career and whether or not it's something that you will be suited to. You could also attend a careers event at a university and speak to some dietetic students at that. This will help you find out even more about what it's like to try and become a dietitian and what the course involves. In some countries you can work as a dietetic assistant and this would be a good opportunity to get an understanding of the role even more. Let's be on to my next tip is that if you're applying for a postgrad or a master's you definitely want to try and have some shadowing experience or work experience as a dietetic assistant or something similar even as a healthcare assistant or a support worker as this really shows that you have some experience you've done your due diligence you know what you're getting yourself in for and that you're really committed to the career. So try to reach out to as many dietitians as possible and ask for some time shadowing. You could also try to volunteer with a nutrition related charity. Another tip that if you're in the position where you're choosing subjects, maybe you're going into your leaving cert or you're choosing your A-levels, do try to make sure that you're doing chemistry and biology or any of the subjects that might be required for the course that you have in mind. And even if they're not required for the course, I would still consider taking them if you can, because they will make it a little bit easier when you get into the course itself, as many of the modules have different elements of chemistry, biochemistry, and biology in them. So having a basic understanding from your high school or your secondary school will really help. Another subject that's not required usually is home economics. But I did this and I found it a huge advantage when I then moved into the course. Many of the things that I had to learn in home economics for my leaving cert, I was able to apply to some of the nutrition and dietetics modules later on. I really felt it gave me an advantage over students who hadn't studied the subject. It does also help to be good at maths. There's a lot more maths in dietetics than you think. You don't need to love it and I'm not trying to scare you if it's something that you're not good at. You're not going to need to be an extreme mathematician but there is a lot of basic maths that you do in your day job as a dietitian so it might be one to work a little bit harder at if it's something that you're struggling with. Then when you do get in I would also recommend that you try to choose very diverse placements. So for example try to get a placement in a paediatric hospital and then an acute medicine hospital because this is the time to play around with getting experience in lots of different areas so you can really find out what you like and what you're good at. I would also always keep an eye out for any mentoring opportunities or if there's any dietitian that you really like that you look to as a role model reach out to them have a conversation with them many dietitians are very friendly and approachable and happy to offer advice on career and any other queries that you might be having and sometimes dietitians I know myself included will take on students to help with projects from time to time and that's another way of building some experience into your resume I hope you enjoyed the video and please comment below if you're an aspiring dietitian. And if you have any other questions or if you want me to do another video looking at maybe placement or the course itself in more detail, let me know and I'd be happy to do so. I'd love it if you give the video a thumbs up and please subscribe and I'll see you again next week. Thanks for watching.